first and then over to the second row. We'll start with the second row here. So, sorry, probably a better question for you, Mike, anyway, than the one I asked the kids. Yeah, because I was here for a bunch of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for me. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys have also been so consistently good. Like, why is this important? Well, we all know. I mean, it, it's one thing to get to the championship game. It's another thing to win it. And, uh, you know, we got to the 8-10, and Shocker was getting to this game, and, and uh, Will got to this game, and uh, it just... It's, it's a hard game to win, like any anything, and the stakes are higher. Now these guys, you know, they, they know the players that played in those games. You know, the one thing we we honor those that came that have come before us by how hard we play and what type of teammate you are. And a lot of these guys, Travian Graham, Eric Maynard, those guys come back all the time, and Briante, and they come back in the summer to work out with us. Um, they come back you know, homecoming weekend is of course a basketball weekend and. They all came back, and so you, our guys know those stories. They know these guys. So, you know, we use all that. That's that's great, um, great education for our guys to understand the history of ECU basketball. And we want to play for championships. It's really, really hard to do it. But if you get there, uh, you know, I've been fortunate as a player and as a coach to get to that game. I've been on both sides of it. But I know one thing: if you want to win a championship, you got to go take it. Can't play to lose. And uh, the last 10 minutes of the game, we went to try to win a championship. And the way we played, we found more. I thought the, the, I thought we got comfortable at times when the game was uncomfortable. And the big thing for me is that the greatest lesson I can teach these guys through basketball is to deal with adversity, because that's life. And so I use it all the time. It's probably cliche, lots of coaches do, but you know, when you're down 11 with 18 minutes left in a championship game, there's only two things that could happen. You could fold or you can keep fighting and you can get through that adversity. So to get to the championship game at VCU, it's something we want to do all the time, but we want to go win it. And to win it, you got to go take it. And I, I thought at least the last 10 minutes out of the game, we went, we made plays, we had aggressiveness, we had toughness around the rim and rebounding, and our defense showed up. We're going to go here to the second round. Uh, Coach, Sam Basil, House of College Hoops. Jamani Kamara entered this game having a great tournament and a great season overall. Yeah. You guys limited him, limited him to six points. Could you talk about what the game plan was in stopping him? Yeah, well, you know, the, last, the two games prior, he had, I think he averaged a 26 and a half against us. So we uh, we knew he'd make plays and he would score and he, and he rebounds so hard. So he, he's going to make plays. We, we had a limit to him. Biggest thing is no set, no open threes and can't give him straight line drives to the rim. We got to get in his way and did a good job posting up early, but I thought Brandon Johns guarded him better on the perimeter, didn't let him rip on him. And then I thought we did a did a pretty good job making a miss around the rim as the game was going on. Now he got in foul trouble, so that you know that limits your aggressiveness sometimes on the offensive side of the ball. But I thought B. Johns and, and Shrive and, and then J.J. guarded him a little bit. I think those guys just did a, did a really good job on him. We're going to go to Matt in the third row. Coach, I heard you say um, that Brandon became a man in the second half, and that was a huge part of stopping him. But holding that team and how dominant they were in the paint to 20% is more than just that. Is there any coaching X's and O's or stuff of what y'all did to – to really shut them down like that? Yeah, well, two things that we, we talked about at halftime was doing your work early. Uh, I just thought we were playing behind and reacting to their movement instead of blow up their movement. Uh, be more more aggressive, a little more physical, of allowing them to catch a ball where they want. So we pushed them off there, and I thought our guards were digging a little bit more in the post. When I talk, when I say digging, when the, if I throw the ball in the post, the guy guarding me will help in the post. He doesn't go double because we don't want to kick out three. But he's just messing with him. We went a little bit earlier than we did prior to going into the game. Um, I, I thought that helped. A couple times we made him pick their dribble up where they couldn't make a post move. So those things were the two adjustments. But I just thought we got tougher, tougher putting our chest on, on good players in the post. I'm going to go over the 10 and the right. uh, 10 Burrell, the Richmond Times dispatch. Kind of alluding on going back to that point. With about 10, 11 minutes left in the game, your defense got so much better. Was there anything said, or was it just a? Well, I don't think I can repeat it, Tim. But I said we will not win the game if we don't if we don't get tougher on defense. If if we allow them to throw the ball where they want, and we don't rebound, we will not win. It's fact. I, I said it like that. It's just fact. 
I said, so what are we going to do about it? We talk, talked about being tougher. We got to be tougher. So it was probably that. That's how I said it. I mean, it, because it was fact. I mean, the guy. I said, you guys know it. I said, if we don't, we don't. We're not tougher on defense. We don't play harder on defense, and we don't rebound and we don't fly in there and get de defensive rebounds. We're not winning this game. So yeah. not, I don't know. The coach, uh, not a lot of coaching, but facts. <laughs> Into the back row. Coach, Adam Epstein, 910 The Fan. How are you feeling? What does this win mean to you and to the program? Well, I'm just, I'm just super, super proud of the guys. Uh, I'm, you know, for, for a coach, and I've been fortunate to experience this before. Um, I think in coaching, you, you want to win. But what becomes bigger than the, the win and the destination is the journey with these guys. What I'm most proud about, and, and I'm super proud of winning a championship, Adam, what I'm most proud about that you guys don't know and you don't see is how much we've come from June 4th when we got together, how much we grew. Uh, a lot of people counted us out when we were five and four, man. Lots. I didn't care about that. That's stuff that don't bother me. But I knew this team. I really liked the pieces we had in the summer. I liked how well they got along. I loved the edge they played with. Um, we had to make some adjustments early in the year. We were playing through our big guys on the perimeter too much. We had to change that. A couple guys were, they were throwing shots up there all the time. We had to change some, some uh, efficiency on the offensive end, shooting the ball, taking better shots. But nobody took it personal. They want to win. And so that journey part for me, that, that, that was the growth. And watching them turn into this team, that was, that's, that's been really cool for me. Guys in the front row. First coach, uh, congratulations on the win and the NCAA tournament bid. Uh, Darrell Jazz Johnson, New York Sports Day. You mentioned losing here with Shaka uh, before. What are some lessons you learn from losing in a conference championship? And what are some lessons I'm sure Shaka yeah. learned from you? What have you learned from Shaka? Well, you know, number one is I think sometimes when people get to a championship game, you don't want to mess it up. And that, that's, just, that's just not me. I'm the other way around. Let's go win this thing. And, you know, uh, Jay Wright, you know, uh, he shoot him up, live in the streets, right? Like, that's sort of our mentality. Tell the guy, if you want to go win a championship, you got to go take it from somebody. That's it. And you can live with yourself if the team is just better in those 40 minutes. But, you don't want to have regret. Last year we had regret. We played not to lose the quarterfinal game to Richmond, and it knocked us off kilter. And blame myself, the two guys, Ace, still can't get over that game. But that would that drove us. But to win, you know, when I was assistant here with coach, we were we got the, we got to this game, and you know, St. Louis, St. Joe's, and um, at times we just didn't play. We didn't do enough to win, or we played on our heels a little bit. Um, we weren't in the right mind. You didn't play with a clear mind, and I just we're, we're never doing that again. And then now you have 18 to 22 year olds, so you never know what what shows up that day. But the mindset I, I want our guys to always have: if you want something in life, you want something in basketball, you got to go get it. And you can't be and and if if it doesn't go your way, you can live with yourself. And uh, that's how I want my, our teams to always play. We'll take one or two more into the second round. This is Rafi conducted by Death Sports Talk. Obviously, VCU has, has been in several NCAA March Madness tournaments and actually got some wins. Like, what makes this VCU team different from past VCU tournament teams? Well, we have really good guard play and we have versatile big guys. So, I, I, I think we're we have good size and length, and we have some ta we have talented players. Just like our grit, I like you know these guys. These guys are pretty tough, and they do a really good job playing together. So. Hey, when you get in a tournament, anything could happen. We've all seen it. We've all experienced it. I was fortunate to be on a team that made a cool run. Um, I, what I'll, what, you just never know. You never know. But I, I know one thing. We'll be ready to play. We'll show up. That's for sure. We can go in the back and then we'll finish up with Matt. Coach, two months ago, you switched up the roles and responsibilities for Nick Kerr and Jameer Watkins. Would yeah. this team be here as champions right now? if those guys didn't properly adapt into those new roles? Great question. Uh, all the credit to Jameer and Nick. All the credit to them. 
accepting the change and understanding their role without not thinking of the team, right? They, it was about if this is what the team needs. They didn't always, you know, they didn't like it. Jameer came off the bench, probably didn't like it. I wouldn't either. But this is what we need from you right now at this time. But without ever losing their aggressiveness and knowing how important they are to the team. But our teammates help those guys with that as well. So all the credit to those two guys, without a doubt, that they accepted the change. Um, they handled it the, the right way. They put the team first. But I mean, both of them, we don't we don't win this thing without the two of them. I mean, because I mean they are through and through VCU type of players. Super proud of both of them. Coach, about an hour and a half before the game, I saw your mom walk into the arena and she looked locked in. I'm wondering what, yeah. <laughs> what motherly advice she had for you heading into this weekend. And also, you talk about family a lot. How, what kind of emotions do you have just doing this? And now you're going to get walk? me emotional. Thanks. <laughs> I'm good at this. Yeah, no, look, uh, I grew up with two parents that believed in me and believed in us. And uh, it's amazing when you have belief and support. So uh, competition in my family, you know, we were tough and gritty. And if you were going to play a game and put on a uniform, go win. Uh, don't just be happy being there. Go win. And that was from Pee Wee football, the CYO basketball, the college basketball, to going to be a coach. If you're going to do it, my dad used to say, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right and do it harder and longer than everybody else. And we just always had belief. So, wish my dad was here. He would be really proud of these, these guys. Coach, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank